want to share with you how I went from delivering pizza to becoming a multiple seven figure business owner. And I guarantee you these steps will help change the way you think of business. Okay. And this story hopefully will inspire. So let's go back to 2015. 2015 about June is when I found out about sports cards. There's two high schools in my town. I'm from a town called Wayne, New Jersey. And there's the middle class side of town and then there's the wealthier side of town. I went to the middle class side of town. Now the wealthier side of town, there was a kid who bought his own car with $30,000. His name was Dylan. He was actually a friend of a friend and I heard about this. And I've always been a pretty money oriented person. So I said to him, I contacted him, I think I texted him, hey, how did you buy your own car with $30,000? And he said, I actually buy and sell sports cards. And think about this, this is a time back in 2015, sports cards weren't what they are today. People just thought of them as like, you know, you put them between bicycles, they're these things that aren't worth anything. And I love sports and I was like, no way. There's no way you buy and sell sports cards and you paid for this card. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, you have to show me. I went over to his house and he showed me you can buy these cards, get them graded, make money. And he kind of taught me the ropes a little bit. And I saved up $4,000 the past year from delivering pizza. So I bought my first card. It was a Steven Matz rookie card, orange Bowman Chrome. I paid $500 for it. Probably a little bit too expensive for the first card you buy, but it's okay. So I bought it, it got graded to 9.5 and I sold it a week later for $888 on eBay. And it absolutely changed my life. Making a couple hundred bucks isn't life changing, but the shift I had in my head from trading my time for money delivering pizza to now all of a sudden, I found something that was scalable and I could do from my computer. So it changed everything. And I slowly started to become obsessed with it. I became obsessed with it through the summer of 2015. I went to university at Albany, so when I enrolled and I got there and I could really lock in and focus, I just started going all in. Now there were some good and some bads. The good was I started to make a little bit of money, nothing crazy, two, three thousand dollars per month, which is really good in college. The bad is it cost me my girlfriend that was in a relationship at the time uh, because it was just taking up all my time because I was just loving it. And I loved doing it. So I did it throughout college, 2016. Then I transferred to Rutgers University in New Jersey from Albany. That was in 2016 of September. And that is when in October of 2016, I found a giant lot of cards on Craigslist in Connecticut. Me and my, my buddy Dylan, the one who introduced me to sports cards, we ended up buying them for 11,500, flipping it for a little over 39 grand. And this gave me some more money to play with. And it was really life changing finding this lot of cards. And I kept pushing sports cards through college. I started to make a little bit more money. I started traveling the country, going to sports card shows, which is really cool. People in college actually <laughs> used to make fun of me a little bit. They used to say, why are you going to all these sports card shows? Like, it's just sports cards. Why don't you come to the bars and party and this and that, which I did, but I love making money. I love doing the whole sports card thing. And I was studying finance at this time at Rutgers University. So I was studying finance as a major and minor in statistics. And what happened in the summer of 2018 changed my life. So I was making money from sports cards, but it wasn't really enough for a full-time income. Like on really good months, I was making like four or $5,000, which is not bad. Average is probably two to three grand. And I said, you know, let me give this a shot. Let me try to use my degree. So I got an internship going into my senior year. So the summer of 2018, and I remember I got this internship. I was a financial analyst working for a company called Atlas in Parsippany, New Jersey. And I remember I sat down my first day in the cubicle and I looked around and everybody just looked miserable. I was like, is this really what the rest of my life is like? But I was like, you know what? Let me give it a day or two. So I gave it about a week and I just couldn't take it anymore. I hated it. I'm not saying this to sound cocky, but I couldn't take my boss. I, the things he would say which was are outrageous. I couldn't believe this guy was my boss. And after five days I quit and that kicked me in the butt. And I was like, I have this, I have to scale. I have to do something else. I have to get online, start making money. Other ways I cannot work a full-time job. This was only five days. Imagine 30, 40, 50 years. When school started up in September of 2018, my last, my last year, my senior year, I started going into all this online stuff like Amazon, drop shipping, trying to figure out what would work. I saved up a little bit of money at this point to invest in these things. I probably had about $30,000 to my name, which isn't bad for being a senior in college. 
and I got into Amazon FBA. And for those of you guys that don't know what Amazon FBA is, FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. So basically how it works is you can buy a product for $3, think of a product, you buy it in bulk, you send it to an Amazon facility, and you could sell it for $15 on Amazon. Amazon takes about a 20% cut and they do everything for you. They ship it via Amazon Prime, deal with customer service, returns, shipping, all that stuff. So it sounds pretty great. Except as you can imagine, because it sounds great, it's a very saturated industry. So I just kind of lost a lot of money doing it. I bought products, they didn't sell. I didn't really know how to market. I didn't know the right types of products to buy. I bought a $500 course that didn't really help me out that much. Going into my no November, December of 2018, I kind of started to figure out it didn't work. Now my next venture that I got into is drop shipping. So drop shipping, for those of you guys that don't know what it is, it's basically, it's less risk than Amazon. So with Amazon, you have to lay out a bunch of cash to buy hundreds or thousands of products at a time to ship it to an Amazon facility. Drop shipping, you make your own website, you sell a product. So let's say you sell sandals, you buy the sandal for $8, you sell it for $30, the person pays you $30, and you pay $8 to the supplier, and the supplier ships it right to the customer. So it's very convenient. You don't have to lay out much cash, you don't have to touch the product, pretty cool. So I remember I used to spend every Sunday for about 12 to 14 hours, including multiple hours during the week, but Sunday was my day to grind. I would test new products, fix my website, and I would do this for about three to four months on end. About April, May-ish, I found a product that worked really, really well. It was a, I called it a vegan sandal. It was like a, um, kind of a hippie looking sandal. And I remember I was buying it for $8, I was selling it for $44, and it was costing me about $20 to sell, to get someone in the door to buy through Facebook ads. So all in all, I was making about $15 to $16 on one sandal. And I saw this really started to work. These things really started to sell. I remember my first day, I spent $20 in ads, and I got $100 in revenue. And I was like, oh, let's, let's push this harder. So I started to spend more on ads, and I was doing a couple hundred dollars a day, then $500 a day, then $1,000 a day, and I got it all the way up to $2,000 a day. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm graduating, um, so this is about May 15th, right when I was graduating. I was doing about $2,000 a day at about 25% profits, and I was like, this is great. You know, I worked my butt off. I'm not gonna have to work for anybody. This is fantastic. I remember I was out in San Diego partying, celebrating that, you know, I got this store off the ground. I worked so hard. And when I got back from San Diego, I found out, I, so I sold thousands of these sandals throughout the course of two months. And I found out my supplier in China was not making these sandals the quality they should have been made. Really was bad. Like it did not look like the picture and me, I'm an idiot because I did not check the product first. You probably should do that. I did not. Pretty dumb move. And when I got back from San Diego, I remember there were hundreds of emails, returns, people pissed off. It was really brutal. And over the course of a long period of time, not a long period, about a month or two, um, money was just plucked out of my business bank account just for returns, $80, $100, $200, being plucked, being plucked, being plucked. And after about two months, I lost all the money I had. So grinding sports cars throughout college, getting this e-commerce stuff off the ground, I lost it all. So the way I got back on my feet was doing what I knew. I started to buy and sell sports cards. I took out a $10,000 loan, loan from my brother. I told him I'd give him profit back. I didn't really give him an exact number. And I started traveling around the country, going to these shows, buying and selling these cards, and I was able to get back on my feet relatively quickly. Now, fast forward to the middle of the summer, about July, August, I met my business partner, who was actually my former roommate in college, or uh, housemate in college, his name was John, and we were on the phone one day, and we found out we had a mutual interest for entrepreneurship, and I still wanted to make this whole digital thing work, so we got together, um, we started a business, it was a real estate marketing agency. What we're gonna do is we're gonna help real estate agents market, get more leads, and he lived in Long Island, I lived in New Jersey. It was kind of difficult to get things off the ground because we lived so far away from each other. So I said to him one day, you know, if you're serious about this, let's get away. I'll pay for it, I have a little bit of money. Let's go to Miami, away from all our distractions, away from girlfriends, fam family, friends, and let's make this work. So I convinced him it was a lot harder for him than it was for me. He's very close with his family, has a girlfriend, I do not. 
So it was way, way easier for me. I pushed him. We moved to Miami January 15th of 2020. And for the first two months there, we were trying to get this real estate thing off the ground. And we tried everything. We we're like, yeah, it's cold calling, all sorts of things. And we were just never able to get it off the ground. Honestly, we just didn't have the skills. We didn't know what we were doing. We never invested in coaching like we probably should have. And, um, you know, we just never got it off the ground. In March of 2020, John, uh, my business partner, says to me one day, you know what, I think people would pay us to learn how to make money with sports cards. And I actually thought it was a really dumb idea. I was like, there's no way anyone would ever pay us to do that. But he convinced me to try it, so we set up a simple ad, we set up a simple funnel with, you know, an opt-in page and a calendar, and we launched it on March 15th of 2020, when we lived in Miami. Um, and it just blew up overnight. So that was the first day of the pandemic actually in Miami, just to kind of put things in perspective, and it just blew up. It went crazy. People were booking calls left and right. We couldn't even handle it. We were just getting on the phone, selling people, and I made more money than I ever even dreamt of the first month of running Major League Profits. Um, it was absolutely amazing. We made a little over $80,000 the first month, which sounds great, but that $80,000 actually ended up costing us years of heartache and pain, and I'll explain why. But the sales did in the beginning and all this overnight success, it gave us an ego. We thought we knew everything. We were like, oh, all we gotta do is start spending more money on ads, hire sales guys, it's gonna be easy. But after a couple months, when it's not sunshine and rainbows, and you actually have to start to learn how to run a real business, hire coaches, get people to be successful, run proper ads, emails, text messaging, all this stuff we didn't know how to do. And our business started to slowly go down like this, slowly, slowly, slowly. And after the next year of doing this, we lost almost all the money we had and we were a couple weeks away from going belly up. We decided to make a change and we just started to pay people to help us because we didn't know what to do. And that changed everything. Once we started to pay people to help us, like other business owners, learn from them, how to scale, how to do things properly, our business started to tick upwards. And in 2021, we started to become profitable again. It's all because we invested in coaching and mentoring. I'm a person that strongly, strongly believes spend all your money on learning, education, and skills because that's the most important thing. Learning skills to actually make you money is way more important than investing in the S&P 500 that'll make you 10% a year because learning how to sell can make you $10,000 per month. Um, so that I'm a strong believer in education and skills and I'm talking about like online education and actual skills that will help you make money, not skills like, you know, algebra two that you'll probably never use in your life that the school system tells you that you're actually going to use as a lot of you guys watching this video who work jobs probably know that a lot of the skills you learn in college and high school, you probably don't even use at your job. So that was 2021 and 2022. Um, so 2021, we actually moved back from Miami. 2022, we moved to, into an entrepreneur house in Texas, which is pretty cool. We lived around of other entrepreneurs, learned how to produce content, learned how to wake up early, which is an interesting thing. I started to wake up like at 5 a.m. there, which helped me out a lot. And um, yeah, then we just continued to grow and scale the business. And um, yeah, the biggest lesson I could say I learned from that and learn from the whole experience of buying and selling sports cards and you know um, investing in coaching and major league profits and all the failures is if you want something to work everything works you have to force it to work the worst the worst thing the worst thing an entrepreneur can have is shiny object syndrome okay let me explain like you can build a multi-billion dollar janitor business garbage business coaching business everything works you just have to force it to work and the biggest problem people have is they don't stick with things. It took us about two years to get majorly profits to be consistently profitable. We had that lucky month in the beginning, then things started to go downhill. But in order to get something to work, you have to force it to work. You have to stay laser focused, the task on hand. If you try crypto, then stocks, building an online business, if you devote 20% of your attention all over these places, none of them are ever gonna work. Devoting 100% of your attention to one thing, it's hard enough to get something to work. Now, if you're not gonna devote 100%, it's almost never gonna work. And that's the biggest problem I see with people. And then the other problem I see is, people think that investing in coaching is a scam, but what people don't realize, and something I always like to tell people is, a lot of these people took out $100,000 in loans for college. And these college is four years of learning things you're probably not gonna use to probably work a job you won't like to pay back a loan to, for, that's gonna take you 20 years. That sounds like a scam to me. 
I don't know about you, sounds like a scam to me. I'll have another video on that on college, my opinion on it. But um, that's my story that's a little bit more involved, but I had to keep, gotta keep it to at least 10, 15 minutes so it doesn't go crazy. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, any questions, leave comments. I always like to respond to YouTube comments specifically. Um, I like to engage as much as possible. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.